Joining me now is Matthew Akins, a Kabul-based freelance journalist. Uh, Matthew, welcome back to The Sunday Show. And, it, um, uh, and if I'm correct, you heard the explosion in Kabul. Well, I'm in Kabul. I didn't hear the explosion. Okay. So, um, so th the fact that this airstrike took place on this vehicle um, by the U.S. military, um, and the military believing that this, that their airstrike is took out the possible uh, suicide bombers uh, that are related to that credible threat from from the president. How? Um, how surprised are you by how quickly the United States is responding first to that first attack on Thursday and then to the, the possibility um, that could have happened presumably today? Well, I think that they clearly have a threat because there was a devastating attack against the airport the other day. Um, we've seen some video reports of the strike today, and it was in a civilian area, crowded area of houses. So we see some houses burning, um, and there's reports unconfirmed of civilian casualties. But they did strike an ISIS target the other day, and um, it's quite possible that there was one here as well. Can you give us a, a sense of what the mood is like on the ground in Kabul, especially as the clock is ticking down to the, the final couple of days before the United States is fully evacuated from Afghanistan? You know, it feels like the fever has broken a little bit um, after the bombing that killed nearly 200 people. A lot of people have been staying away from the airport. A lot of people have given up. There's very few people who have gotten through today and probably uh, I don't know if anyone will get through tomorrow. So it's already ebbing away, and I think people are bracing themselves to see that first flight, last flight, rather, depart. And then once that last fl flight does depart, um, what sense do you have of what Afghans' expectations are from the Taliban? Well, there's a lot of fear, obviously, especially among people in Kabul. Um, especially among people who work for the government, for the foreigners. But there's uh, so far, you know, no evidence of large scale reprisals or anything like that. And the city has been relatively calm. So I think people are just waiting and seeing. I would say also that what people are most afraid of when I'm talking to ordinary people in the street, um, alongside the Taliban, it's, it's poverty. It's that this country is going to go through an economic collapse and it's going to be abandoned and sanctioned by the West uh, under the Taliban. Um, there is talk that um, there will be the possibility of Afghans being able to leave the country after the August 31st deadline, um, that the Taliban will allow um, people to leave the country. How secure are people? Uh, in that, I don't want to say promise, but in those statements from the Taliban. Yeah, yesterday you had a Boston Aksai, a senior Taliban official, say that Afghans would be allowed to leave the country normally if they have paperwork, passports, and visas. Um, they'd be able to leave with dignity once normal commercial operations resume. So but that remains to be seen whether the Taliban will do that, but it also remains to be seen whether the West. Uh, and other the international community will cooperate with the Taliban in helping to re reopen the airport, in helping to uh, restore normal flight operations, and especially in helping to give visas to Afghans they think are vulnerable, at risk, um, or as if this is just a sort of short-term thing while media attention was on the evacuation.